scientists, are you ready for a virtual field trip? From sunny Los Angeles, let's go to the California Science Center with your hosts, Mariela and Monica. With a special appearance from Amanda Carr. Let's go to the California Science Center. Hi scientists, welcome to virtual field trips at the California Science Center. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. Virtual field trips will have a question of the day. And today's question is What do plants and animals need to stay alive? Pause the video now to write down the question of the day in your notebooks. And don't forget to write or draw things you observe in the video to help you answer the question. All virtual field trips will also have a buzzword. Today's buzzword is Environment. Anytime you hear this word, be sure to make check marks or tally marks somewhere in your notebook to keep track of how many times you hear the buzzword. Before I forget, there may be times we might ask you to pause to think about a question. You'll see this sign and hear this sound to remind you to pause. Okay, I think we're ready for a virtual field trip. Let's go! This is our World of Life Discovery Room, made for scientists like you to come and take a closer look at a living thing. Scientists, since we are trying to understand what plants and animals need to stay alive, what better way to investigate than to observe animals themselves? As scientists, we understand that we are trying to care for animals in a place that is not their natural home, so that we can learn from them. We need to make an environment. An environment is all the living and non-living things in your surroundings that help you stay alive. But do all living things need the same thing? One way to find out is to observe animals. This is the enclosure for our skink. Do you see it? Skinks are the second largest group of lizards in the world, and they can be found all around the globe. Because the skink you see here comes from a more tropical forest habitat, we created an environment that looks like a tropical forest. This environment has lots of green plants and has different levels for the skink to climb on and explore. Let's check out the other enclosure. Well, I think it's in here. Hmm, do you see it, scientist? Oh, there it is. It's a sand boa. These snakes have thick bodies that they use to burrow in the sand. This type of snake prefers places with soft sandy floors so that they can easily tunnel underground. Most types of sand boas are found in places like a desert, so we created an environment that looks like a desert. There are not many plants, but lots of soft sand. Seems like the perfect place for this snake. Let's take a look at these environments side by side and see if we can find things that are the same. What do you see that's the same here? Hmm, this might be a challenge. I see that the skink has a lot of tall green plants, but the sand boa has only a few plants and a lot of sand. Oh, scientists, I think I found something that's the same. Do you see that? Those bowls have water in them. Why do you think the keepers have this water here? This must mean that animals need some kind of water source. Water is very important to have in an environment for animals to drink in order to stay alive. Do you notice any other things that are the same? Oh, scientist, 
I think I made a discovery. Look here. This skink has a special bowl full of veggies. This must be its food bowl. I wonder if we can find a food bowl in the Sambo enclosure. Let's go look. Hmm, seems like the Samboa doesn't have a food bowl. Does that mean it doesn't eat? Look, it's Louise, one of our keepers. Louise, does this Samboa not eat food? Of course it does. We just feed the Samboa behind the scenes. He doesn't eat in his enclosure. Thank you for that information. So scientists, animals need food, of course. In order for them to survive in an environment, they need food. And the keepers here make sure to keep our friends well fed. Wow, I feel like we learned so much by observing these two environments. So far, we learned that animals need water and food. I know where we can go see if this is true for all living things. Ready, scientists? Let's go. Okay, scientists, now we are heading into our ecosystems gallery. And here we have very different environments from the ones we just observed. <laughs> Wow, scientists, all this walking and talking has me really thirsty. It's a good thing I stopped by a water fountain. <sighs> okay, let's go. Let's head out to the rocky shore. What perfect weather to explore a touch tank where we have animals that guests can touch. Let's take a closer look at this environment. These are a few different kinds of sea stars that are found in our touch tank. Let me point some out to you. This is a knobby sea star. Here we have an ochre sea star. Bat sea star. And leather sea star. While we have a variety of sea stars, they all come from a similar habitat. In the wild, these sea stars live in tide pools, which are pools of water left behind when waves crash on a rocky seashore. Here at the California Science Center, we have tried to create a similar environment for these sea stars. Just like all other animals, these sea stars need water to survive. But lucky for them, they live in the water all the time. Look at this sea star. What is it doing? It's moving closer to that white thing. Uh, now it's touching it. Now it's touching it with its little feet. Oh, I see. That's its food. Those little feet have suction cups at the end to help it bring the food to its mouth, which is right in the center of its body. Wow, look at it move. The sea star must be ready for lunch. Ooh, lunch. That does sound good. So scientists, just like the first enclosures, these animals also need water and food. <gasps> All this talk of food has my tummy growling, scientists. I just realized something. Just like the animals here at the California Science Center, I also need water and food in my environment to survive. So animals and humans all over the world need water and food too. But what about plants? I know another environment we can explore. And the best part is that it has plants and animals that we can observe. Let's go. Hi, scientists. I'm Amanda. I'm part of the education team here at the California Science Center. I heard that you have a focus question that you're trying to answer. I'm here in the Exploration Grove, and I thought maybe we could check it out together. Come on. First, do you see any plants behind me? Oh yes, those long, tall, green plants are called bamboo. They're the fastest growing plants on Earth. Now, the bamboo is not the only living thing found in this environment. Let's take a closer look. Don't be scared. Wow, scientists. I didn't realize that all these living things were here. 
I know you investigated some environments in the California Science Center. And just like those animals, these insects need water and food. This bamboo grove is a great place for them to find what they need. But what about what the bamboo needs? Just like animals, this bamboo needs water. How do you think this plant gets its water? Here at the California Science Center, we make sure to give our bamboo just the right amount of water it needs to stay alive. Plants work differently than animals. They use their roots to absorb water from the soil they grow from. Now scientists, let's take another look at the bamboo. Where do you think this bamboo eats? Do you see a mouth for it to eat? I don't see a mouth, but do you see all those leaves? Well, scientists, just like animals, plants also need food, but they don't have mouths like we do to eat the food they need. They use their leaves to get energy or food from the sun. Our building is designed to let sunlight come through so that the plants can have the light that they need. One of the cool things about bamboo is that the more sun it has, the quicker it will grow. And look at how tall our bamboo has grown. It's grown straight out of the building. Hope you had fun exploring with me. Have fun on the rest of your trip. Hi scientists. Today we are going to sing a song with some of my friends. Let me introduce you to them. These are the science songbirds. They want to share a song about what living things need to survive. This bird will sing first. You and I will follow along with this bird. Sing along with me and follow the moves that I do as we sing. Ready? Who eats food? Who, Who eats food? Animals. Animals. Animals eat food. Veggies, nuts, and meat. Animals like you. Animals like you. Who eats food? Who, Who eats food? Animals. Animals. Animals eat food. Veggies, nuts, and meat. Animals like you. Animals like you. Who needs light? Who needs light? Growing plants. Growing plants. Plants are living things. Plants need light to make food from the sun. From the sun. Who needs light? Who needs light? Growing plants. Growing plants. Plants are living things. Plants need light to make food from the sun. From the sun. Who needs water? Who needs water? Living things. Living things. Animals will drink it. Plants will absorb it. Water is life. Water is life. Who needs water? Who needs water? Living things. Living things. Animals will drink it. Plants will absorb it. Water is life. Water is life. That was fun, scientists. Let's head back to the discovery room. What a great field trip. Let's go over all the things that we did today. We started our field trip in the World of Life Discovery Room, where we took a side-by-side -side shot of two environments created by the keepers here at the California Science Center to discover how animals in this place need food and water. Then we made our way to the touch tank where we plunged into an aquatic environment and found that living things here also needed food and water. We joined Amanda in the bamboo grove to discover the needs of plants there and discovered that just like animals, plants also need food and water. Finally, we sang a song with Mariela and the science songbirds about living things and their needs. Now scientists, can you remember the focus question? What do plants and animals need to stay alive? Can you answer the focus question using the buzzword? Environment. 
Okay, scientists, it's time to count our check marks. How many times did you hear the buzzword? Drum roll, please. And the answer is 14. We hope you had fun on this virtual field trip at the California Science Center, and we look forward to seeing you next time. For more information on virtual field trips, please visit our website.